Well, good day. It's uh, Golf Zero Mike Julia India here, G Zero MJI, and I know it's a long time since I made a video for the channel, for which I apologise. But uh, I've been busy with my other channel, which is a motorcycle channel, so it tends to take up a lot of my time. Anyway, without further ado, let me explain what I'm trying to do here today. Uh, this is the original hard drive that was in my uh, Hewlett Packard. G1 250 laptop, very old machine, and this drive is very, very slow. It's not actually the original original, it's one that I replaced it with. It's a one terabyte Barracuda. I don't think they're particularly fast anyway. But it was getting to the stage where it was taking like two minutes, three minutes before I was even able to use Word. So I thought, shall I get a new laptop or shall I throw the dice and see whether I can do a cheap fix? So I purchased this, which is an Asino AS25 one terabyte uh, drive, you can see. Physically they're the same. Both drives fit into the rubber shockproof caddy thing which then fits into the PC. If you want to know how to remove it, your hard drive from this particular computer, I've actually disassembled it, but your first stage is to remove the battery, then undo this cover here which clips off, there's a single screw which means you can then get to these two screws, unclip those, and then that gives you access to the hard drive um, partition. Be very careful when taking your hard drive off this connector because it's very easy to yank that off and it's just on a, on a push fit there. Interesting, there are two of those there. What are the other ones for? Anyway, that's the uh, SATA input, SATA input. Now, what I did before that is I used one of these uh, on the um, Arseno drive and did a clone of the original drive using uh, Macrium Reflex. I'll put a picture up on that. It's a free program. I tend to find it works okay. And um, there were no issues with it. It just takes about four or five hours to complete. I'm sure that's, you're quite familiar with it. So I did all of that. I So I cloned the drive that I had in the computer for the last two years, took the Asano SSD drive and fitted it into the caddy, which is here. Um, fitted it into the caddy, fitted it back to the computer, turned the computer on, and I got uh, no boot drive, which is a real pain. So. I scratched my head for a long time trying to figure out why it was. So much so in fact that um, I crashed the original drive, had to repair it and go to restore point. So, and that still didn't solve the problem. I recloned it, recloned the, SSA, uh, the SSD, still didn't work. So I got to thinking it probably wasn't a problem with the clone and maybe had to think a little bit more carefully about what was actually going on. And I'll show you what I discovered. Could be useful. So I hope you can see that, but the screen that came up when I installed the new SSD drive was uh, Please install an operating system on your hard disk, hard disk 3F0 Now I'm getting that at the moment because um, I haven't actually got a hard disk in But this was happening when I'd installed the uh, Asino drive and I couldn't figure it out for a while So this is what I discovered and it may be of some use to you Curiously, I don't remember this happening before when I've changed the um, two and a half inch hard drives, the old, I've, I've, which I've done a couple of times. I don't remember having to do this. So just in case, this is what I had to do. I had to go into the BIOS by pressing F10 and then I had to scoot along to system configuration and down to boot options. And what I discovered was None of this stuff here, boot manager, diskette, USD, none of that made any difference. I've discovered that secure boot was on. It was actually enabled like that, which I think, I believe, locks the uh, system to the to one hard drive. Um, I've since discovered that if you disable that, by going into there, press F10, save that to the BIOS, that it works with both drives. Later on, once you've got the drive working, if you want to lock it back, you turn it back on and it seems to be okay with the second drive. So let's have a look what the difference is between these two um, drives. And I'm not going to show the whole thing, but I will time it. I'm going to boot the drive from cold, run a Geekbench, 
and shut it down and time it on my phone. I'm not going to show you all of that because it'll be very boring, but just to give you a kind of difference of the general performance that you're likely to get just by adding, I think this was £60, a £60 cheap SSD. I would back this up regularly though because they do have a history or reputation of failure. So, but I do that anyway. So let's see. Back in a moment. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to boot this um, old um, hard drive to an half inch standard hard drive and uh, set the stopwatch going, run Geekbench and shut it down and time the entire process. And we'll see how long it takes for the original drive to work. So turn on, press start. I'll have to watch all of this because I've got to log in, but uh, you don't need to see that. Now I only use this computer for um, Microsoft Office really, one or two other um, shack problems and uh, solutions, reflashing uh, U3s, various things like that, just basic stuff. And it used to boot in about 30 seconds and I could be using it, but now it takes a very long time. So 34 seconds has gone and we haven't even got the, uh, um, the Windows login yet. Basically, to me, this is just due to Windows updates. I can't see any other reason for it going slower. I use it mainly, as I say, for Microsoft Word. The only addition to this computer over the years has been uh, Windows 10 updates. I know when I first got it, I was astounded that I could be using Word within 20 seconds of turning it on. Of course, that was five years ago. So the question is, can a simple SSD make a difference. Well, let's see. So, 2 minutes 38 seconds, I can enter my code. And nearly 3 minutes. I'm still waiting for the taskbar to appear so I can run Geekbench. So, I'm just waiting for Geekbench to load. Now into 3 minutes 40 seconds, and so far I haven't been able to use the computer for anything. There we go, Geekbench 42. It's an old version. It's okay for test purposes. So I'm just going to run the CPU benchmark, nothing else, which I don't think really uh, tests the hard drive particularly, but it's just an application. So generally, can I turn on this computer, run an application, shut it down? If so, what sort of time are we looking at? Okay, just coming up to eight minutes and uh, it's completed its Geekbench, so it's just loading the um, web page which will show me the results. As I say, I'm not interested in those, I know it's not going to be fast. I know it's not going to be fast, not interested in those. Shut down that web page, shut down that program, and shut down the computer. So the minute the power light goes out, I'll stop the clock. So let's run the same test with the SSD in. So I was at about a second slow turning the clock on there, so we'll add a second to it at the end. So 12 seconds in, we've got the splash screen. Put my pin in. Okay, 25 seconds we've got the computer booted and we've got the taskbar populated. Let's run Geekbench. You do have to be a lot faster with the SSD yourself. Later, run the CPU. So we'll run the same suite of tests just as um, program really to run as an example. I don't think it makes much use as I say of the hard drive but we're one minute in and we're running the program it's been running for 15 seconds so it's considerable um, speed in startup even with a cheap uh, SSD. I think this is a fair enough test because um, 
your computer is not just about your hard drive it's also about uh, your processor and everything else and I've only got 8 gigs of memory and a very slow i3 processor so there's the score I shut that program down shut that program down and I'll stop the clock when uh, when the power goes off so five minutes eight seconds point three compared to the uh, other version the other the, sorry compared to the standard hard drive to me that's a worthwhile improvement I think the drive was £60 off Amazon. I haven't heard of the make. It was the cheapest I could find purely for experimental purposes. And I shall be backing that up at least once a month. I do that anyway with any kind of drive. I don't know what the quality of that drive will be, but I'm certainly quite impressed by its uh, speed improvement. So, good day to you. Golf Zero Mike Julia India, signing out. 73s. Well, I remember, I'll just uh, go back into BIOS by pressing F10. So I'm going to go back to um, System Configuration, Boot Options, and re-enable Secure Boot, just to test that it will now work with this drive. Press F10, Save Changes, yes. Now it should now boot with the SSD. I believe what's happened will be that it's accepting the secure boot on this drive because it's been in the computer. Whatever processes HP have put in place has been added to that drive. So they've just put the old one terabyte drive in, this wouldn't work now unless I turn off secure boot. So secure boot was the issue that made this a little bit trickier than it should have been.